Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at inverse functions. So here I have a function machine. I want you to imagine that I have an input x and that I have an output f of x. So imagine I had x, I multiplied it by 3, I added 4 and that gave me f of x. This would correspond to the function f of x equals, well I take x, I multiply it by 3, that's 3x, three and then I add 4. So that's my function f of x. What we're concerned with in this video is something called inverse f of x. And we denote inverse by putting this negative 1 up here. That's not to be confused with a power negative 1. Uh, for example, 3 to the negative 1, which equals 1 third, or f to the negative 1, which would equal 1 over f. This is not the case. This is simply notation. That's how we write an inverse function. So how do we calculate that inverse function? Well. You can work this out relatively easy from this function machine here if I reverse the direction of the arrow. So what if actually my input was over here, x, I added 4 times 3 and then I get f inverse of x out. Well, it's not going to be x add 4 and times 3 because that won't give me the inverse values. Actually what I need to do is on my way back I need to undo everything I did on the way. So instead of having a plus 4 I need to change that to a negative 4 and instead of having a times 3 I need to change that to a divide 3. So I have x, I take 4, I divide 3 and that would be f inverse of x. So the inverse function of f would be I start with x, I then take 4 and then I divide 3 and that's my inverse function. Now this was quite an easy one to do, it isn't necessarily that easy in all cases so we're going to have a look at how you should approach these questions. So here we've been given a function f of x and we need to calculate the inverse function of x. The procedure I'm going to recommend is this. First of all write the function out again but instead of f of x here we're going to write y. So y equals 2x plus 4. And then what we're going to do is interchange x and y. So everywhere there's a y I'm going to write x and everywhere there's an x I'm going to write y. So let's change this y for an x equals two lots of, or instead of x, let's write y and write plus four. Then what we need to do is change the subject of this formula. At the moment, the subject is x. I'm going to change the subject to be y. So I'm going to, first of all, take away four from both sides. I would have x subtract four equals two y. And then I would divide both sides by two. That's why I'd have x take four, divide two equals y. Then what you can do, well, I'll simply write it as y equals first. So we have y as the subject with y on the left hand side, so it's the same thing, just reversed. You change your y for f inverse of x. So f inverse of x equals x subtract 4 over 2. That would be the inverse function. Now it should be obvious again looking at this one based on the function machines we had before. If you did 2 lots of x take 4, if you reverse that, sorry add 4, if you reverse that you take 4 and divide by 2. Let's have a look at a second example then. So same procedure. First of all, replace the fx with y. y equals x squared plus 3 over 7. Interchange the x and y. So x equals y squared plus 3 over 7. Now let's make y the subject. Times both sides by 7, we get 7x equals y squared plus 3. I'm going to continue up here. Um, let's have 7x. Let's take 3 from both sides. Take 3 from the left, I get this take 3 from the right, I get this. Now I'm going to square root both sides. So y would equal plus or minus the square root of 7x subtract 3. Then I simply interchange my y for f inverse of x equals and then square root of 7x minus 3. Now when you square root both sides of an equation you should always put this plus or minus. However, if a function is to be well defined you wouldn't necessarily need the negative part of that. We tend to just take the positive root. So you will get away with this absolutely fine in an exam. Okay, here's a bit of practice for you then. So here are four functions where you've been given f of x and you need to work out f inverse. Have a go at these and then when you want the answers press play I'll tell you what they were. Okay, here are the answers then. So for this first one we have y equals 7x minus 2 in which case x equals 7y minus 2. If we interchange them, now we get x plus 2 equals 7y, and then x plus 2 over 7 equals y, 
So f inverse of x equals x plus 2 over 7. For this next one, we have y equals x squared subtract 2, interchange x and y, and then we get x equals y squared minus 2. So we have x plus 2 equals y squared. So y equals plus or minus the square root of x plus 2. So f inverse of x equals square root of x plus 2. For this next question then we have y equals 5x plus 3 over 4. Interchange, you get x equals 5y plus 3 over 4. Times both sides by 4, you get 4x equals 5y plus 3. And then subtract 3 from both sides and I'm going to divide 5 at the same time. We get 4x subtract 3 over 5 equals y. So f inverse of x equals 4x subtract 3 over 5. And the final one here, y equals square root 3x plus 5. So interchange, x equals square root 3y plus 5. Some people make a mistake here. Um, you need to square both sides to get rid of the square root because that's the inverse function of square root is the square. So x squared equals, now on this side, nothing would be squared. The reason we squared is to get rid of the square root. So it's just 3y plus 5. And then x squared, we need to take 5 from that and divide 3 gives you y. So f inverse of x equals x squared minus 5 all over 3. Okay, I'm just going to give you a third example here because the rearranging of the formula is slightly more complicated, but the same technique and method applies. So we're going to write out y equals x plus 3 over x subtract 4. Then we're going to interchange x equals y plus 3 over y subtract 4. The reason this one's more difficult is because now when we make y the subject, y appears twice. So we need to remember how to tackle that. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y subtract 4. So on the right hand side, things will be simple. I just get y plus 3. The left hand side though, I get x times y minus 4. I need to keep that in a bracket so that everything is multiplied by the x. Now if I expand, I get xy subtract 4x equals y plus 3. I'm going to continue up here. And now what I need to do, because there are two y's, I need to gather all of the y's on one side, all of the other terms that don't have a y on the other side. So if I keep xy where it is, that has a y in it, I subtract, I've still got negative 4x, I subtract y from both sides and then leave that free here. Uh, now I've managed to get the y's on the same side, but I've still got this negative 4x term that has no y's in it, so I need to lose that. So if I do this and have 3, then what I need to do is add 4x to both sides, like so. Now what I can do that's really clever is factorize out the y. So if I get y, x subtract 1, that's the same as this, just factorized, and now the magic has happened, and I only have one y. So y equals 3 plus 4x, I can divide both sides by x subtract 1, and I end up with this. So f inverse of x equals 3 plus 4x over x minus 1. Now it's possible, depending on your rearrangement here, that you may end up with a negative version of that. So if you ended up with f of x equals negative 3 subtract 4x over 1 minus x, that's also absolutely fine. It's simply this function here multiplied by negative 1 on the top and negative 1 on the bottom. So both of these will be acceptable. Okay, here's two for you to practice where the x appears twice, so it's going to be slightly trickier. Press pause, have a go at these ones, press play, and I'll tell you what the answers were. Okay, so here are the answers then. We have y equals x plus 7 over x plus 2. We interchange x and y. 7 over, oops, y. Let's just make that a y, not an x. y plus 2. We have multiply both sides by y plus 2, remembering to keep it in a bracket like this. Now we'll expand the bracket. So we have xy plus 2x equals y plus 7. Let's group the y's on the left and the other terms on the right. We end up with 7 subtract 2x. Factorize that y out. And we get this. And then finally divide. So y equals 7 minus 2x 
over x minus 1. So f of x equals 7 subtract 2x, all divided by x subtract 1. All right, let's go for a green. The second one here, we have y equals 5 subtract x over 3x plus 2. x equals 5 subtract y over 3y plus 2. That's the interchange done. Then we multiply both sides by 3y plus 2, remembering to keep it in a bracket. It's 5 minus y. Let's expand the bracket. 3xy plus 2x equals 5 subtract y. Now we get all the y terms on the same side. We have 3xy, add y to both sides, gives you this, and take 2x from both sides, gives you this. Factorize that y out, you get 3x plus 1, and then the right hand side still the same, and then finally y equals 5 minus 2x over 3x plus 1, and that's our inverse function, f inverse of x equals 5 subtract 2x over 3x plus 1. That completes this video on inverse functions.